In my last video about the DIY BMS version 4, I built this module, uh, which I, well, dropped all the components on and I put it in my reflow oven and I talked a bit about the improvements over the version 3 that I also use here in the solar shed. And as far as I'm aware, this works. I say as far as I'm aware because I haven't yet put the firmware on this module. I have, however, gone ahead and built three more. So I now have enough cell module circuit boards here for my Life Epo set, which I'm going to have in a 4S 3P configuration. So for each of the uh, four cells in series, I need a cell module. So I have all four waiting to be programmed, and that's the job for today. But quickly, before I get on to flashing these modules, I want to answer the single most frequently asked question that I've ever received about this DIY BMS. And that question is, well, where can I buy the DIY BMS pre-built so I don't have to do it? And my answer has always been, well, it's a DIY solution, so you kind of have to build it. Nobody is selling them. But actually, recently, that kind of changed. Recently, Stuart, who designed the DIY BMS, and a couple of the other people who were actively using it, I think, came up with the idea of getting the uh, cell modules built by JLC PCB. And I'll point out that this is not a sponsored video, uh, but I decided to go ahead and order some of these pre-built modules, and they're in here. So let's uh, remove all this packaging and see what we've got inside and there's quite a lot of that tape around this bubble wrap and there we are now i've ordered five of these and they're all stuck together with masking tape and straight away i think you'll notice apart from the obvious green and blue this pcb is quite different to the one in the background now that we have the boards next to each other, you can see there are some considerable differences. Uh, on the right here, the DIY BMS version 4 used 0805 resistors in the main, and these are 2512, I think they are, for the shunt resistors. On the left, the uh, version 4.21 uses 0603 resistors in the main, and these 1206 resistors here as the shunt resistors. Now, of course, that's smaller and more difficult, but why would we care? Because JLC PCB are fitting them for us, so we don't need to worry that these are really quite small components. As you can see, JLC PCB have sent this board on the left fully populated bar two components. Now, this diode up here, which is a voltage reference, um, I could have had fitted. Um, I made a mistake. I didn't search the catalogue properly. And actually, uh, now the files that Stuart provides will uh, fully populate this board now bar the ATtiny 841 microcontroller. And Stuart has changed this circuit somewhat and the size of the components to make this board as cheap as possible. And I had this whole thing manufactured at JLC PCB for $5 per board. And I think that included the PCBs itself. I'll have to check my spreadsheet. Yeah, I'm pretty sure $5 per module. Uh, obviously, there's delivery cost on top of that, but I think that's pretty good value. I now just need to fit the ATtiny 841, so I'm going to give that a go now with my standard soldering iron and some standard solder, and we'll see how I get on, because of course that is the one thing that JLC PCB won't do for you, so people who want to buy a pre-built module are still going to have to solder the ATtiny 841 and of course the uh, through-hole components as well. Now it's always tricky soldering with a camera in the way, but I'm going to give it a go to show how easy it is to put one of these chips on one of these boards with just a standard soldering iron. Uh, no doubt I will get egg on my face, but let's just put a bit of solder 
down here on this pad here. Uh, and I'm going to use this pad just to hold on to the AT Tiny 841 while I solder the rest of the pins. Now, there is a pin 1 marker up here on the uh, top right as we look at it, and uh, the AT Tiny 841 is also the right way round, and in its top right here, I have a small dimple uh, indicating pin 1. So I'm just going to pick that up with these tweezers, bring it in over here, hold it in roughly the right place, touch my soldering iron to that pin and uh, warm that solder through again and that now is being held in place in pretty much exactly the right spot i'm quite pleased with that and now it should just be a matter of going around warming the pad and the leg and adding a tiny tiny bit of solder and uh, this solder is 0.8 millimeters, I think. Um, that's not bad, I don't think. That's looking all right. So I've done this side. I'm going to go back to that first pin, just touch it with a bit of fresh solder. And uh, yeah, I think that's okay. I think that's all right. So I just now need to do the other side, whoops. So there we have it then, I think that's all right. I think that's a reasonable job. So I'll just fit this diode, which I uh, should have got JLT PCB to fit, and then that board will just need the through hole components soldering onto it. As if by magic, there we have it, the AT Tiny, that diode, and all the through hole connectors are soldered in place. Let's now program this. Now, to put the code on these modules, you need to use Platform IO, and that is built on top of Microsoft Visual Studio code. So uh, let's go to visualstudio.microsoft.com and download the Windows x86 installer and that's downloading so we'll just wait a minute and with that executable downloaded i will just click and run and with a bit of luck it's just a matter of saying next 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 uh no i don't need a desktop icon next install yeah excellent so with Visual Studio Code uh, both installed and running, um, I'll just click this button here. Uh, go to the Extension Manager. Well, yeah, that's interesting. I don't have a button like that, but I suspect... There we go, it's that one. And we can search for Platform IO. And there we are, and I will click Install. Now, while I'm waiting for Platform I.O. to install, uh, let's have a look at the GitHub repositories. And there is two of them. Now, this one is mainly to do with the hardware. The DIY BMS V4 here is to do with the hardware. And there are three branches. Uh, there's the master, which I think is the uh, 4.0 uh, boards that I have. Uh, then the new and improved ones are the JLC PCB assembly version, which is the uh, green boards that I've just had delivered by JLC PCB. And then there is a standard 4.2 version. If you were going out and buying your boards now, I would choose one of these. Either have them assembled by JLC PCB or choose version 4.2. I'm going to go into the JLC PCB branch, and now this is where, in the releases section, we can find the Gerber files, which is the actual design files for the PCB to have it manufactured. The BOM file, which is a bill of materials, that's actually just a list of all the components that are on the PCB. And then a CPL file, which is um, the pick and place placement file so it's telling the pick and place machine exactly where each component is on the uh, PCB and uh, its orientation so those are the three files you need 
to have your boards built by JLC PCB like I have. However, we're not doing that bit at the moment. We're doing the software, and that is in a separate GitHub repository, the DIY BMS V4 code. So this is the latest version of the code, and I'm just going to download that as a zip file and save it somewhere sensible. I'll probably put it, uh, well, in my downloads folder? No, I'll move it to the desktop and extract it. So if I just double click on there, we'll copy that and we'll dump it on the desktop. Excellent. And then I'm just going to get rid of that through habit of using Arduino IDE. So I've kind of given up on uh, Studio Code, so I've closed it down. I think Platform IO had indeed installed, and hopefully I'll get some obvious. Yeah, it's just on the check, and it seems to be completed. So now we can see the whole Platform IO, and this is the page we're welcomed with. And I'm just going to open a project uh, and find it on my desktop, go into there, and oops, go into the AT tiny cell section, and there is the platform io.ini there, so I should be able to open AT tiny cell module. And after a few moments, the code opens up, and we have the ini file here now. So, upload protocol. I'm not using the USB ASP. I'm using the USB Tiny ISP, and I believe that's what I need to change that to. So, my programmer is a USB Tiny ISP, so I've said use that. Uh, it is worth noting that uh, this uh, USB Tiny ISP is 5 volts only. Now Stuart does suggest you should um, only flash this with a 3.3 volt programmer but I don't have one and I've been through the component list on that board and I'm sure that everything is 5 volt tolerant. I think the key is you need to make sure that the module is disconnected from your cells that it's going to monitor when you program it. So don't program it connected to cells. But I think the 5 volt programmer should be fine. I guess we'll find out in a minute. So I think that's all I need to do. Now I've changed it to make sure it's using my correct programmer. Um, and I think I will just have a look at building it with the tick down here and uh, that opens up this terminal and fingers crossed that code will compile and it didn't it failed and uh, there's lots of yellow here which doesn't necessarily look great but um, it downloads these uh, dependencies these other uh, repositories from github to get going so it just says it exited and didn't work I'm just gonna try it again I think see what happens and on the second attempt it worked it took 17.3 seconds and it created it compiled that code so that code now should be able to go on to my board um, and that is done using this little right arrow so upload so let's check well let's see if we've got everything set correctly let's have a go so it might recompile that code again it's downloaded and installed AVR dude oh no it's working there you go so look we've got the uh, green and blue LEDs showing on the module Sort of transmit and receive on the AT Tiny, I guess. Lots of activity there while we program the chip. Excellent, that seems to be working. There we are then, success. Actually, flashing it, I think, only took about 25 seconds, but another 120 seconds were used up uh, verifying. So um, now I have a flashing 
red LED. And I've got a feeling the red LED is the bypass LED. So that means... Yet yeah, those resistors are starting to get warm. And I guess that makes sense, actually, because I'm powering this circuit through 5 volts, although not advised by Stuart. And, of course, it's now thinking that the cell that it's attached to is sat at 5 volts, so it will be trying to discharge it. So I will now disconnect that, which suggests, of course, that I think that module is working. Yeah, those resistors uh, are cooling down again. Yeah, so... That seems to work. I've always been a bit reticent about using platform I.O., but actually, that was really straightforward. Now, if you made it this far, I think you're doing very well. I've got to the point where I've actually flashed eight fully populated modules through platform I.O., and to be honest, it wasn't as difficult as I thought it might be. It is worth noting that I've actually flashed the same firmware to every single one of these modules, despite there being hardware differences between the two sets of PCBs, the firmware is identical. It does make me wonder actually if you can mix and match different modules in a pack, but I probably won't be doing that. I have now got 8 modules and for my Life Epo 4 pack, well I only need 4 of them because it's going to be 4 cells in series. So I intend to use the 4.21 boards on my Life Epo pack and I've got enough components left in my component tray for at least 3 more of the version 4 version. So, Perhaps in the future, my lithium-ion pack here in the shed, which is seven cells in series, will get an upgrade to uh, the DIY BMS version 4. Anyway, that's enough for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.